I'm not as into prophecy. Yeah, the, the world prophecy type things because um, that's not where God has me. But um, when I thought about it, I thought, yeah, that that could really happen. I mean, China is very, very powerful. Yes, they and are. they own way more in the United States than we realize. Evil. And they are buying up the Evil. United States. They are buying up the United uh, States. They real, own a lot of farm ground. I realize that uh, the Israel was not a nation since 70 AD, and uh, it's been our lifetime that they become a nation again. Which is, uh, yeah. Would you give me a coffee, then? This reminds me of two men in their Bibles. California used to do this. They'd sit and discuss yeah. Well, Miss Sheila had a different idea of her day, so we're, oh. we're this is called conversation. <laughs> and Jesus wants to be a part of our conversation. Amen. Mm -hmm. And Pastor and I have some of the best conversations when it's just the two of us. Mm -hmm. And we think, you know, mm -hmm. we'd like to give you a little glimpse of what that looks like. Because I know you think we're crazy. Well, we, I know Roxanne's crazy. Yeah. For Jesus. <laughs> crazy Christians. I'm one of them crazy people. I, 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 what, what's that song with that? Crazy people. Yeah, Linda yeah. loves crazy, crazy people. So she, she's going to love that. But last week, um, Pastor Richard taught us about praying in Matthew. And, and then Pastor found a meme that says pray. And then it's spelled out P-R-A-Y. Praise, repent. What was the A? Repent. And Y was yielded. Of ask, ask. Ask. Yes. That's because that's Matthew 7-7. Seven, seven. Ask seek and knock. Ask. And I thought, you know what? That is so powerful because you can spell the word pray out for the very thing God's asking us to do. But today we're going to teach you about yield. And it's coming into God's presence. Do you know that God wants to have a conversation with you? Mm -hmm. But you have to yield yourself to get into the presence of God. And, you know, when we turn the lights off down in here, it's it, when we worship, it's all about setting the atmosphere. Yeah. So yeah. you've got to take God's word in there because how are you going to hear what God has to say if you're not in his word? Amen. You've got to turn the lights down so the distractions of the world yeah. aren't busting in. And as a, a Barbara always says, I love intercession when it's just me and God. Because you know that's when you can hear him. Because when you pray with others, you're easily distracted and you're pulled off what you yeah. were praying about. And then you can't hear God because everybody else is praying. Mm -hmm. But when you're in a room, just you and him, now right. he can talk to you. So we're going to teach you how to soak in the presence of God. Because if you turn on the worship music down low, we are going to do that. Yeah. You have it? Yeah. He could do that. And then we're going to speak God's word over you. We can do, well, I don't know, know if it would be good for them. Oh, at, we're teaching today. But no. hey, when you're at home, turn the lights out too, or turn the lights down low. But I said, we, we want you to be able to see us, and we want to be able to teach this. So this is a new thing that not everybody practices. But um, this week, I want you to Google Carol Arnott, A-R-N-O-T-T. She was a pastor's wife. She was up when Toledo um, in Canada, Toronto. I'm like, Toledo's in Ohio. Let's go on further north. We're going to Canada. So when the uh, when the revivals happened up there, she says, I'm just a pastor's wife. I have no gift. And her husband kept saying, you love people. You, you have a quiet spirit about you. Well, God taught her how to soak and just come into his presence. Because she said, every time the Holy Spirit hit, she's out on the floor. And says, how are you going to talk to people if you're always out on the floor? <laughs> So God, so the one guy comes up and he speaks over top of her and says, from now on, you're going to be able to stand. 
and you're going to be able to teach, and you're going to be able to talk to people because she was shy, and she was quiet, and she was backward. But you know, those are the very people God wants to use yes, because they're already yielded. They know it's not about them. It's only about God until God fills you up. Are you actually going to be able to do what God called you to do? And it doesn't always look what you think it's going to look like. But when you're listening to God, then all of a sudden you start seeing God. So we brought this little sponge. It doesn't amount to much. It's kind of swiveled up. It's hard. It's, you know, used. it's well used. <laughs> and, you know, it's, but worn out. it's worn out just like the rest of us get. And as this world is going through all that we're going through, you can see this pretty much looks like us. Yep. Right up. But if we could go sit and soak in the word, the living water, we change. God's able to fill us up. So we're just going to let him soak right here while we're talking, and we're going to see what happens to him as we So that's what Pastor and I are going to do. And we're going to ask Barb to read out of her book. And we're going to set the stage because we want you to come into his presence. And she's going to read out of the book in him. You want to come up or you want to read from there? I'm going to at least give you a microphone. It's called in him, and I think, don't know if you remember when I wrote it. According as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestined us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will. Ephesians 1, 4 and 5. He chose us, predestined us, preplanned us, and not just me, a believer. His intention and plan and purpose was intended for, for all. His plan doesn't say somewhere that's that some he predestined, some to go to hell, to condemn some, and to save others. His plan says that we're predestined for salvation, adoption, and glory. From the beginning of creation, he planned that we should all be his kids. We should all be brothers and sisters in the Lord and live together in union with him. Of course, the kicker is that he also wanted us to have a free will, a will to choose him or not. Because he gave freely, he wants the same from us. He was given a free choice when he came to earth, and we are given that same free choice. Because he is God, he knows the choices I will make. He knows what is ahead of me, the mountains or valleys. Because he is God, he knows the decisions, decisions which people around me will make which will affect me and which may cause me to make a choice different than the first choice. He went through the very same things. Others' choices put him on the cross, but he was willing. His mind was already made up. No matter what their choice was, he was sticking to his original choice. Jesus was going to be obedient to the Father no matter what the cost. He knew the valleys he was going to have to walk through, there were far more valleys for him than mountains. Even when he was on the mountain through doing his Father's will by sharing himself and, his, and gifts, there was always those in the background trying to drag him back into the valley, throwing stones to try to knock him down and put him back in the valley. There were those who did everything they could to try to keep him from enjoying the peace on the mountaintop. Only those moments when he could slip away by himself did he find the communion and fellowship with his father to give him the strength and power to go on. His desire to obey the father, knowing the father's desire was for all, his children to come home to him. Jesus came and gave all to pave the road out of the valley. He made a clear path for our feet to walk up to the top of the mountain to the very pinnacle where his glory is, because that is where he is. He knows the valleys I'm walking through. He knows what has put me in the valley, or who is, who or what is keeping me there. If I can just focus my eyes on the path, just put my gaze ahead of him one step at a time, and begin to look up the path, I will begin to see the light of glory coming down from the Father of lights, and he will lead me out into his glorious presence. 
I must not lose my focus. It doesn't matter that I choose to go into the valley or that I, at times, have trouble seeing the path. He is constant, ever-present, letting the light of his presence reflect on the path for me to step on and lead me out into victory and peace. Lord, may my focus today and in the days ahead be to seek out your path and, your gl and the glory of your presence and walk towards you to victory. I love you, Jesus. I don't know if you all remember, but um, you remember those little exercises that I gave you to close your mind and, and just focus on Jesus and then picture yourself with him in a place of quietness. Now, a lot of Christians, they don't like the word meditation, do they? Because they think that has to do with new age. There, there is a line there. But it's not new age if you're focusing on Jesus. Amen. Jesus only. Um, we have to allow him to speak to us through, you know, why did God even give us an imagination? Yes. Did you ever think about that? He gave us an imagination to use it for his good. Him. Now, we can have bad imaginations. But that's not of God, is it? When we allow God to use that meditative state that we're quiet in, we can picture and it just takes over. It's the spirit connecting to spirit. And he will speak to you through visions sometimes, or maybe it's just a word. Now before Sheila that's her thing. I want to share three visions that I had. And I shared this at the prayer um, meeting we had Saturday. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Um, we've been soaking for 10 days. And what what we mean is we turn the music like you hear on in the back, just soft music, maybe dim lighting. And we're just sitting there with Jesus. We invite Holy Spirit in, and then we just quiet our mind if possible. <laughs> Sometimes you can't quiet your mind. It just won't allow you. But but if you really do that every day, just set that time with God every single day. After a bit, your mind will settle down and you'll be able to quiet your mind to where you can focus on Jesus and then put yourself in a place. Well, I was doing that. Uh, we've been praying and focusing with uh, Melissa and, and Rick and um, praying over their situation. But I was uh, soaking, and uh, my my first my first vision was um, as I was soaking, I all of a sudden there was like this limb with leaves on it that came to me. And the sun was shining through the leaves. And you know how you get that really light green, really beautiful green from the light shining through the leaves? Well, as I was looking at that, and I was saying, oh, that's so beautiful, Lord. The light, the sun kept getting brighter and brighter. So then I was focusing on the sun. And through the sun came this beautiful white horse, and Jesus was on it. And it was flying. And... He came down and kind of grabbed me, you know, like the knight in shining armor would, grabbed me and threw me on the back of the horse. And we went up in the air flying. And um, I asked Jesus, I said, what are we going to do today, Lord? Because I was excited, you know. It's on this horse. And we're flying over these houses. And I, I raised out my arms. Jesus said, I left that apart. He said, we're just going to go for a ride today. I'm like, okay, cool. So I raised my arms out, and from my hands came these sparkly little things, and they were flying and landed on the homes. And this was all over the world. It wasn't just a community. It wasn't just a state. It was all over the world. And we, we were taking this ride, and, and I was letting these sparkly things go out. And I didn't understand what the sparkly things were until later when he said they're seeds. They're seeds that are going out.
to every home, every nation, every tribe. And those seeds that you're planting will go and spread and spread and spread. And that's what each and every one of us is called to spread the seed. That's, that's right. the word. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So, okay, that was my first really beautiful uh, visitation. My second one was um, I, I was soaking and I pictured myself in this like ocean scene with palm trees and a rock and uh, I was like a little girl and I was splashing in the water, you know, splashing. And Jesus all of a sudden was there. He was splashing in the water. We were splashing each other, you know how kids do. They splash each other with the water and stuff. And he was laughing and I was laughing. Then I turned around and I went kind of running and he started running after me and I dived in the water to swim and he dived in the water after me to swim and we both came up out of the water laughing and I got this overwhelming knowledge that the water we were in was the living water, the word, and Jesus was in the word because Jesus was the living water and um, when I turned to the side and the sea of the uh, shoreline, I seen a deer, and I'm, I just thought, "Wow, a deer!" And this deer looked like it was licking the water, like it was drinking the water. And I'm, I thought to myself, "That's odd, you know. That's salty water. It's it's ocean water." And then uh, the Lord said, "Why don't you picture a deer?" I said, "I don't know," and He said because you're dear to my heart. And when he said it, I knew he was meaning his children are very dear to his heart. And then and then the it, it just came to me, he didn't speak I didn't see him speak it out, but he told me that the reason the deer was licking the water was because you know deer like salt. salt. They like the salt box. And he said that he reminded me of the scripture of the salt, that if you lose your saltiness, you're no good for me. You cannot lose your saltiness. And Barb, the Lord used Barb with a, I gotta speak this out because the Holy Spirit's nudging me. <laughs> Barb spoke a word today, but um, uh, the Lord was speaking to me a word that um, there's some here that have lost their first love. They're not striving for him anymore like they used to strive for him. They're not spending time with him. They're not reading. They're not praying. They're not going to church like they used to. They're, they're just walking through life like it's an everyday thing. And that's not what God has for you. That's not what he has for me. He wants our life to be an abundant life, a joyful life with him. It's not about a church. It's not about the pastor behind the church. It's about Jesus. Yeah, yeah. It's about community relationships that we build with one another, but it's not. When you put your faith in a minister, or you put your faith in anything other than Jesus, you're gonna you're gonna get hurt. Yeah. It has to be Jesus. Yeah. You know, he we go through trials, and we go through things in our life that are going to hurt us to the core. I've been hurt by church in the past, but we cannot let that rock us to where we kind of quit going as much. Maybe we're doubting a little bit. Well, God's word hasn't done anything for me yet, you know. Uh, we get to the point where we're just... Lukewarm. I don't want to be lukewarm. Amen. I want to be one of them crazy people. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praising the Lord. Yes. Praising the Lord. Raising my hands for Jesus. Yes. I don't want to be lukewarm. I want to be in group Bible studies. I want to be teaching people. I want to be learning from other people because I can learn. I'm not just the teacher all the time. I can learn. It, when we stop learning from God, we're dying. Yeah, yeah. Because we should be learning every day. And I want to tell you something too. God speaks all the time. If you're not hearing God, you're not listening. 
You're not in his frequency. You're not in his frequency. You know how you tune in a radio and you get those crackles and stuff like that? We have to be tuned in, sensitive to the Holy Spirit. I always pray, make me sensitive to you, Lord, so I can hear you. Make me sensitive, Father, so I can hear you when you speak. There's an old song that says, turn the radio on. <laughs> and and that's, that's what we got to do. We got to turn our radio on. We've got to know who he is. And the Amen. only way to know who he is is to get into his word. And remember when Cliff was here, he taught us about hallowing his name. Oh, yeah. So when you remind God who he is and what his word says about him, he likes then the blessings come down. And then he wants to talk to you because you're taking time to talk to him. And then he's going to give you a new assignment or a new anointing or direction or because that's when you need to pull into God is when you're facing those valleys, that, the valley of death. You know, it might be a loved one that's getting ready to go home. You know, those are tough days when you have to sit yes, by them. Yes, I've done that. Mm -hmm. it, it's I not an to. easy thing. My, not my mate. Not my mate. My mate's still with me. I love him <laughs> dearly. I'm not calling him home. That's not prophetic. <laughs> I'm just saying. But I'm thankful that I had that opportunity with my mother and father to help them cross over from this life into the next. But you guys, we have the best, best news is there is a death, there is a burial, but God came out with resurrection. He gave us the gift of eternal life. So we don't want to... And, you know, Psalms 23 talks about he walks through the valley with us. Yes, he does. And then uh, the valley of decision is Joel 3, 3 14. Yeah. We have to know when we are seeking God and we have those big decisions, because I'm going through one of those right now in my life, that I have to be desperate for God. Yeah. I have to seek God to answer those questions as I'm in this valley of decision because I want to make the right decision. Because my decision affects so many others. And your decisions aren't just your decisions. They affect our children, our they grandchildren. Do. Yes, they do. You know, it, it, a spouse, you know, where you work, where yep. you, you know, even where you're going to have dinner. But it, even if you're going to life, because it might be a divine. But if you're not listening, then you don't go where he tells you yeah. to go. But we have the valley of dry bones. Yeah. And we've all been dry bones. Oh, yeah. But God sees a mighty army. And in the season that we're in, no matter how big the world's army is, we've got to remember who our God is. Amen. And our God can speak to those dry bones and rise them up to be the mighty army. There is more for this than against us. Amen. In 1 Kings 19, 11, and 13 talks about Isaiah. Uh, I Elijah. Elijah goes out and he stands in the presence of the Lord. That's what soaking is. It's standing in the presence of the Lord. Because if you're in the presence of the Lord, that's when you have the ability to stand. Because you know what it is he's asking you to do. You know, it, it, when it, they were on the mountain, and, and it's just like uh, Barb just read about the mountaintops, you know, and there's always somebody trying to pull you off the mountain. There's always somebody trying to cast stones at you. But you had to realize that that storms that came, it, the voice wasn't in the shaking, and it wasn't in the firing. It was in the whisper. Yeah. It was in the whisper. But you know that when the president the cave, that's God's protection. In the soaking is God's protection. That's where we get divine education divine words. Yeah. That's where we know where to put the next book. That's where we fill up it's our strength. oil and gives us strength and gives us joy so they can persevere and we can push through and we can get what we need to go forward. Yeah. But Jesus wasn't the only one that did that. You have to remember Paul and Silas were in the, yeah. in the prison yeah. and we just sang there's another in the fire. What a beautiful song. Because the Hebrew men 
were in the fire, fiery furnace. They were praising the Lord. And there they were, walking about, praising the Lord. And then the king looks in and he sees four. Mm -hmm. That's because there was another one in the fire. And that was Jesus walking in the fire with them. Mm -hmm. You know, we're all going to have that Red Sea moment. And we're going to, but we're going to walk across dry land. But the moment that Jesus says enough is enough and God says your enemies are no more, they're going to disappear within that Red Sea. That moment's coming. That's why I want to teach you. That's why we've been talking about soaking. Mm -hmm. Because we want you to be seeking God in the quietness of your house, in your rooms, because that's where you're going to find those assignments. That's where you're going to be able to, and like you said, prophetic in the, in the nation, it's hard to discern what's false teaching and what's true teaching. But if you're leaning into Jesus, that's mm -hmm. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Right. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart and all thy ways acknowledge him and lean not into your own understanding. And God will make your path straight. Just like God. Uh, we were listening to Morningstar this morning, and he was teaching on Ephesians 1. And, and then read you read it. it. And I was like, that's God. We didn't know that was going to happen, but it did. That's God. And it was just a moment that we yeah. were sitting here and we were talking about today, and you know, we'd asked Barb to read that, but I had forgotten it was Ephesians 1. Mm -hmm. And there he is in South Carolina, and he's teaching on Ephesians 1. Yeah. I'm like, is that so timely? That is so God. Things like that don't don't just happen. That's a God move. That's like say, hey, hello. Are you listening? Mm -hmm. Are you tuned in? Do you see me? I yes, Barb. I just keep feeling like that that's why God... I just keep feeling that that's why God, when, when I believe he spoke to us this morning, he, he said, open the door wider. Yes. Yes. Because we have to let all of it in. Yes. Not not just open the door far enough that you can see him, or maybe touch him, but yeah. And sit down and have a cup of tea with you or whatever. You know, I I know I'm using the physical to describe a spiritual thing, but we have to open wide the door of our hearts. Yes. Wide. Yes. I think a lot of people are afraid to do that that far, because they're afraid that that's going to go off and come that's so far from true uh, God, you know, wants you to have those times with him in soaking in soaking, you first have to realize that it's not just you sitting there listening to soft music you invite the Holy Spirit in he's there with you, he's all the time his presence is there The natural world, they, they attempt to always counterfeit what God is doing. Mm -hmm. So the world tells you to empty your mind. God isn't telling you to empty your mind and your soul because that's when you invite evil in. That's mm -hmm. right. Amen. He is asking you to meditate on his word. Because just like the sponge, if you're... When you get rained out and you get bumped and you get poked, the living water comes out. Amen. There's a lot of things a sponge can soak up that's not pretty. Oh, yeah. Blood, the, dirt, mud, oil. And, and, and it ruins the sponge. Make sure that we are soaking in the living water and that we keep going back to God and asking him to cleanse us. Because Amen. we do pick up dirt from the world. That's why we have to watch our eye gates and our ear gates, and we have to guard our hearts. The Lord said, guard your heart, because he knew that there is temptation outside. But it's the choices that we make. It's what we say yes to. It's what we allow into our life. And again, the music that we're listening to, the movies that we're watching, the books yeah. that we're yeah. reading. When we get quiet, we allow the Lord to speak to you, and, it sh and he shows you things, as we're talking about the visual. And uh, when Roxanne said, 
the, the we're just going to ride. You know what that was saying? It was saying we're just going to be. But who was riding the horse? Who was driving the horse? It was Jesus. Yeah. He goes before leave us. Anything he asks us to do, he's going to do it. But then with the anointing that came was sewing was the glitter or the sparkling that was going into the households. It was because she was available. It's because she asked God. And then God gave her the anointing and gave her the assignment to go out and preach the word. But we're all called to do that. But you see, it's been the being first yeah. and being available that then God can use you. But if you don't get quiet enough, then you're not going to hear what it is that God wants. Because the noise of the world is always higher pitched. It's look at me, look at me, look at me. You know, it's like the war. You have to realize that there are hurting people who are just like us. There is a church yes. in China. There is a church in Iran. There's a church in Ukraine. There's a yeah. church in Russia. Amen. There's a church in all these nations that the, the elites, the top of the, the decision makers, are making these decisions, but there's people just like us that are, are dying because of other man's decisions. Because we're not valuable to them. But we are valuable to our maker. Yes, we are. Amen. He is our creator. He breathes life in us. Every heartbeat, every breath we take, he already knows the days we're numbered. So we do everything to the glory of God. That's why it's so important because my 20-year-old nephew that passed away thought he was going to live to be 70, 80, 90. He yeah. didn't know that God was going to call him home at such a young age. You know, my parents went home at, in their 70s. How do you know how long you're going to live? You don't. You don't. Those babies have been taken home before they ever left their mama's wombs. Mm -hmm. And that mama's womb should have been the safest place they were ever yeah. at. That's true. There has been blood sacrificed. There has been death. But God says, I redeemed those children because I made them with a purpose. They had a design. But man takes life out because he's afraid of what he's going to be able to do. And like we've been talking about testimony and witnessing, yes. we've got to open our mouth and share our we story do. for God's glory. Because someone else needs to hear it mm -hmm. so they will share what they've been through. It's just like the song, there's some, you know, again, someone in the fire. When I went through the house fire in 1993, I pulled out Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. And the fireman said to me, what do you have there? I'm like, all I need to hang on to. Because I knew Jesus was going to rise me up out of those ashes. I knew he was going to see me through that. When we went through the business flood, and it was waist deep, deep through our business in 90. You know, you can sit down and you can cry and you have to clean up the mess after the water recedes. You can lean into God's understanding and know that he's going to bless you beyond yes. what the world it's has done out. to you. It's part of what molds you and shapes you and it teaches is. you it to is. hold on to yep. things yep. loosely because you never know Amen. what God's going to require it again. That's yep. right. But that's, that's right. what changed my heart to know it was all his. And, it, and I don't know that I'm going to have any of this tomorrow. There may be a tornado come through. There may be another loss. It's been stolen. It's been thieved a thousand times. But no matter what man meant to harm me, God blessed me beyond it. But if you're not quiet, you don't see the purposes. You don't see the meaning behind. When the three boys came through on the prayer walk, um, I had invited them on the property. They were here. We had them camping. We would had a great summer with them. At the end of the summer, we had closed the 3D range, so there's nobody on the property. And herd mentality, it, it, it happens. You, you know, one kid wouldn't have had a problem, but we ended up with three kids. And they became my Hebrew children. 
because this red hair of mine turned really red because they had uprooted. They had gone through with a wiffle bat. They had pull, pushed them over oh into the woods and it uh -oh. broke my heart. I weeped and I cried because I knew those were of God. I knew God used them as a testimony. I knew God used them and Holy Spirit and all the people that had been through my walk had shared their stories and their testimonies. And they would call me and said, I needed that. And I'm like, I don't need to be in the woods. Holy Spirit is. And he met these Amen. people. And it just grieved my heart. And then you know what God said? Whose signs are those, Sheila? They're yours. And he says, I'm using them. And I had to take my hands off. And he says, I'm teaching these boys a life lesson. Because the redhead in me wanted to take the wolf bat and wanted to beat them with it, okay? But because of letting go and walking it out and crying with the Lord in the woods, I was able to be the witness and tell them the meaning of these signs and why they were so important and what God was doing and the people that it reached. Because there's 600, 800 people here one weekend of the year on the R100, okay? Those signs are out there to testify. They're just silent witnesses. If you know what they mean, they mean something. If you don't, it makes you ask questions. Well, what does whiter than snow mean anyway? And then the guy's ready to testify all day long because someone asked a question, and now I can tell you the answer. I know what that means. And like you said, the fruit of the spirits, I think everybody ought to know what the fruit of the spirits are. Yeah. They're out there on the walk. It makes them ask, what, what about that fruit salad? Ben Carson talked about, and everybody was like, fruit salad? What fruit salad? <laughs> but you've got to know that that's joy and it's peace and it's long-suffering. And when we're, we're in God's word, he just precept upon precept upon yeah. precept, and he starts putting his word in your heart. Amen. And now all of a sudden, you know what that means. And it's not a private joke. It's like, I want to make sure I have good fruit salad. I don't want it spoiling. <laughs> okay? I want nice, crisp strawberries. <laughs> I want the beautiful grapes that are, you know, I don't want them sour grapes. I want beautiful, full of flavor grapes, you know? I, I just think that is so God. But let me tell you, because we were able to share with those boys and the families, I got to speak to five families. You know, the boys came and they helped me repair the signs and they helped me put them up. Nothing around. But if I had set in my anger and my justice, I would have beat those boys, and that's all they would have remembered. But they remember God's grace, and they remember that I could have, but I chose not to. And I weep with them, and they weep with me, and we said, I'm sorry, and, and then God just used it, and it was the most beautiful thing. But we were able to touch all those family because I let go. I say, weren't mine anyway. But you've got to be ready to let go. And that's when you soak in the Lord, you let go. Yep. And you die to self because there's always a death, the burial, and the resurrection. Are you going to let those dry bones come up? Are you going to keep telling them that dry bones, you're dry bones, you don't love here anymore? Jesus says all dry bones are going to rise up. He tells yeah. us every tongue is going to confess. He tells us every but every going to bow because he is the king of kings and the lord of lords but if you don't know our father his son and the holy spirit you don't know the peace of this lord the the, the world has to offer because it's only in the lord only in him only in him so the things that you're going to get from soaking is you're going to find peace you're going to start changing the way you think. You remember, that's one of those verses that we hang on to, uh, Romans 12, 2. It's the transferring, the transforming of your mind. It changes the way we think. So now we're looking for blessings instead of troubles. We, we quit saying, oh God, I can't believe it's been such a horrible day. And we start seeing the beauty that surrounds us. And we start counting our blessings instead. 
and to thank the Lord that we've had this time together. That, you know, when you're sitting there at the deathbed, thank the Lord we laughed. Thank the Lord we cried. Thank the Lord we have these memories. And, you know, that's what my mom and my dad are still here today. I hear them in my head. I know when I'm misstepping, I've heard that speech enough that I know that not to put my foot there. Okay? And, but that's the way our loving father is. He wants to protect us. His word is the words that guide us. Mm -hmm. And they direct us. And they, and they keep us from falling into the pits. That's why he wants to make our path straight. But if you don't get quiet, you can't hear him. He wants to have that double conversation. Yeah. yeah. What you got? Uh, I want to read a scripture. Um, it's James 4, 8 through 10. It says, come close. Now, this is the New Living Translation. Because um, it just says it's so plain and so right on. Come close to God and God will come close to you. Wash your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts. For your loyalty is divided between God and the world. And this is kind of like, you know, if, if you're... If you're lukewarm or if you've let your first love go cold, you're divided. You're not really on for God or, or on for the world. You're kind of right in the fence, and that's not a good place to be. Because he says he's going to spew out the lukewarm. Yeah, and then it says, you have done. Let there be sorrow and deep grief. Let there be sadness instead of laughter. And gloom instead of joy, humble yourselves before the Lord, and He will lift you up in honor. Amen. Um, whenever we're kind and humble, and we just do things out of the kindness of our heart, and we serve other people, God will bless us. You know, I, I truly believe the reason Mike and I have been so blessed in our life, we've always paid our tithe, you know, and we've always given offerings, you know, we, we do over and above what God. Uh, calls us because that um, that scripture that says you know how do you rob me you know yes. I think about robbing God you know sticking God up and saying give me all your money I mean that's what we're doing take his time when we don't tithe and we don't give our offerings and we don't we're not we his hands and feet we yeah. don't give food to people we know who need it and we don't you know we're supposed to give over and above yes over and above, not just a little here and a little there. You know, if you know somebody needs something and you've got it, give it to them. Yeah. Uh, you know, I seen my husband the other day, you know, and he's a businessman, so, you know, he thinks the money. But um, this lady came in, got a dozen donuts. Well, he goes, how about I give you a baker's dozen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Baker's extra. dozen's 13 instead of 12, so he gives her that extra donut well, free, you know. Uh, <laughs> he took one out. The businessman's making more money. <laughs> so he, he did that, you know, and he does that every so often, you know, uh, throughout the day. If he just, if something just hits him about a person, he'll give him an extra donut or something. And, and you know, you give out of your heart. And uh, God, God calls all of us to do that. Yes, not just, does. not just a little here and a little there, you know. Whatever you have that you can be a blessing to somebody with, your time, maybe, then do it. Do it. I'm going to be a blessing to Debbie tomorrow because I'm going to take her to the doctor. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it builds relationships because you're going to have a conversation and you're going to lift up God. And it's iron sharpens iron because now you're both going to feel much better because you went together. Because I know how that is when you get together and you love spending time with people. And it, and it just blesses you. And, it you know, it's like after a hard work, week of work, you know, you're tired, you're dragging, and then we get here, and it's like, woohoo, go God. <laughs> you know, I, I just, I'm so excited to celebrate life and to celebrate God and his goodness and his faithfulness. He is faithful and true. He keeps every one of his promises. And we have to know. That God's word in Romans says that everything works out to the good for those, I'm paraphrasing, who love the Lord, right? Do you love the Lord? Yes, I do. So no matter what you're going through, no matter the trials in life that you have, no matter how hard it is, God will turn it for good. 
Because his word says it. And if his word says it, it's a yes and an amen. Amen. Yes. There's no if, ands, or buts. Now, you may have to wait for 30 years for something to happen, but it will happen. That's where the trust comes in. You've got to trust God. But you have to remember that, you know, 40 days they, or 40 years they wandered in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it's our lack of faith, our lack of not doing what God asked us to do, that we can't go into the promised land. And sometimes God's promises, because remember a day and a thousand years and a thousand years is a day. Just because it doesn't happen in our lifetime doesn't mean our grandchildren aren't going to see the very completion of that promise that God made. Now, look, it looks so look much better. Look at the sponge. It's got a deeper color to it. Yes. Look at all that water that's just spewing out of it. And you know, when we get in God's word and we soak and we come up against someone that might need a word like that, our water should just gush out of us. We should be able to pray with anybody, no matter where they're at. Just don't say, I'll pray for you. Pray for them right there in the grocery store. That's right. Don't care whoever's looking around. Pray for them in the donut store. Pray for them at work. I'm sure Miss Sheila's prayed for her over a gun counter before. I, I will pray with you at the gun shop anytime. We go out in the parking lot. We have a big family circle because it was that important that the family needed that family circle. You know, I said just latch hands. We're going to pray right here, right now. You have to be bold and courageous. But I just said the best compliment anybody can ever ask you is pray for me. That's yeah. right. That means they know you are of your child. You, you are God. Pray. You are a prayer warrior. I said, please, I don't deny me the blessing to pray with you Amen. and pray over you and pray Amen. you through. Because we all get in pits. We Amen. all need somebody with a light and a rope that's going to shine it down there and say, you're not here alone and I'm sitting right here until you come up. Because sometimes we're hiding. Sometimes it's hard. Yeah. But we need to know people hear our voice in the wilderness when we're crying out, does anybody hear me? Does anybody yeah. see me? Does anybody know that I'm hurting? Yeah. You have to realize when people are self-harming, it's because they're hurting on the inside and they want you right. to see the hurt that's on the inside on the outside. Mm -hmm. You've got to be able to have adults and, and, and people that you can come to, maturity, to be able to talk to. But the, when you commune with God, he gives you the assignments, and the next thing you know, you're able to talk to people, and you're able to reach them into the deepest pits. Mm -hmm. But we have one rule. Yeah. yeah. You want to share it? You okay. can share it. You tell them what our rule is. When your hurt is hurting me, it's time for me to let you go. Yeah. We've got to trust God to take you. We can't walk it out. We can walk with you, but we can't do the hard work for you. Yeah, you, you're the one that has to do the work. It's, like, it's just like, you know, it's like two people who are married maybe that's that doesn't mean that Mike's going to have salvation that's right. and go to heaven. That's up to him. You know, and just because you belong to this church and you stand behind me, that doesn't mean you're going to go to heaven. You can't come it's down on the you. tails. You've got to right. do it. You've got to work doesn't. out your own salvation. God doesn't have grandchildren. He doesn't have right. grandchildren. He only has first generations. First generations, yeah. We are his sons and his daughters. And what a blessing to know him. So we know this was a little different than what we normally do. I love it. But we just wanted to start getting you quiet so you could get in his word and so you could be calm. This is because I know I'm a little overwhelming sometimes. I have a lot of passion in me. I bet you I know. know your new nickname. Uh-oh. Mouth. Mouth. <laughs> now I'm in happy days. It's so good. I like it. Mouth for the voice for the Lord. She, I promise I won't call you that. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Voice. How voice. about voice? I like voice much better. But it voice. is the decade of the voice. We have got to quit shrinking back you know I said, this word is offensive it really yes. is and that was my next vision i didn't share my third one go let's do it now okay. now's the time but and this is your segue the, the <laughs> third uh soaking period where i see another vision was that i kept seeing this eagle with its wings spread out real wide and it was sitting on the ground and it was going ah! 
you know, like that, and then it would reach down and it would pull up uh, meat from a prey that it had caught that was on the ground. And it would pull up that meat and then it, it took off flying and it landed on the eagle's nest. And the, they had the baby eagles in there. So this eagle was feeding the baby eagles with the meat. And I took that as feeding children the meat of God's word. And this eagle had this one baby eagle um, that it just pushed out of the nest. And I thought, oh my God, is that, that eagle's going to die. You know, it's fallen from the nest. But the right when, before it hit, the eagle flew down and, and, and caught the baby. And that's like pastors are supposed to be. Pastors are supposed to see. Push you out of and the nest. Give, I've been pushed give, a couple times. Give you the meat. Give you the meat of God's word to go out on your own. And and I'm a pusher. I've pushed a few people out. <laughs> <laughs> I have. <laughs> to go do their you know. And and uh, she was already went to a church and shared, haven't you? You know, and it's it's awesome when when God will use you. And, you know, uh, the meat of God's word is offensive. When you, when, but the, the fact that I seen the eagle feeding the babies the meat, you know, God, God's word is offensive. You know, for us in this time, we're standing on God's word uh, uh, against homosexuality. And uh, there's not 27 generations, uh, 27 genders, I'm sorry. Well, you, there isn't 27 genders in a dog and a cat, is there, or female or, or male? No. You're either a male dog or a female dog. There's there's no ifs, ands, or buts there. With the part, that's what you are. If, if Satan has messed your mind up to make you believe you're something else, then that's, that's where our renewing of our mind is not brought into uh, God's word. Now don't get me wrong. I, I love I love them. I do. And I, I've i had fun with some of them. You yeah, know, yeah. I mean, we laugh. We yep. laugh, yes. cut up. Uh, they sit at our table. You, you, don't, yes. you don't push them out because, because you're a sinner. You're going to go to hell. No, it's not like that at all. God is a gracious God. He's a and he has love. And his desire is for them to come and know him like that. Yes. Our problem is we try to clean them up before, before yes. God does. You know, when, when they come to know the Lord, I prayed with a, uh, with a homosexual. And he has Jesus in his heart. But it's not my job to clean him up. That's right. That's the Holy Spirit's job to That's clean right. him up. As long as he gets in the word and going to do yes, it. Yes. Amen. Yes. <laughs> That's all I got. <laughs> well, let's uh, wrap it up there and say that you're going to, you have to be open to receive Jesus so you can hear him. Yes. You've got to get in his word and you've got to worship and praise. Tell him who he is. Then he'll tell you who you are and what he created you to do. Mm -hmm. So get involved with your um, Bible studies and teachings on subjects that you're interested in. And learn new things, because God's doing a new thing. It's not to look like the old thing. But you've got it. He wants to give you, that's why he gave you that imagination. It yeah. was because of the creativity of what he's creating. But if you're not spending time, then you're not going to know the answers. And the answer isn't going to come from just pastor telling you a message. Right. You've got to get in the word for yourself. Yeah. So it takes root. So it grows. And then we're all grounded in love. And then when somebody squeezes the sponge, yeah. what comes out is God's word and not human. Man's anger and frustration or wolfle bats, I'm just saying. So God is great, gracious. God is kind. Let us be humble. Let us be kind. Amen. We are his hands and his yeah. feet. 
we need to say yes, Lord, to whatever He asks us to do and not be afraid to move into that. Amen. So Amen. we hope that you've enjoyed soaking with us today. We hope that you will come and soak with us again. We'll probably have just a soaking Saturday when you just come and sit in the know what that means. We're not going to be jumping up and down. You know, we might have donuts because you know, <laughs> we do know with people in the donut business. But, um, you know, we just want to be seeking God Amen. and where he's taking us in this next year. And we know the tent revival is coming back at the end of September. Uh, we're working on a car show yeah. in July. Yeah. Um, so we're just going to do a lot of community outreach where we can talk to new people. I don't want to come Amen. and be part of the family of God. Amen. That's Amen. why we're training and equipping. God's doing a new thing. That's why we sit at a round table because there is no head at our table. And that's why Pastor and I are sitting here. <laughs> Just having a conversation that we invited you in. But God wants to be in every conversation you have. Amen. He wants to go to Walmart when you go to Walmart. Amen. Ask him who he wants you to talk to. He wants to go to the bank with you when you go to the bank. He wants to go to the grocery store. If we are going to see revival, it will be in all seven mountains because the eighth mountain is the mountain of the Lord. And yeah. it's the only thing that's going to stand the test of time. I'll close with this thought. Um, we all wear different hats. Every hat of a husband. He wears a hat of a businessman. He wears a hat of a dog caretaker. <laughs> I wear the hat of a mother, I wear the hat of a wife, I wear the hat of an artist, I wear a hat of a pastor, I wear, I wear different hats, just like each and every one of you wear. But there's one hat that you should have on all the time that never comes off, and that's the helmet of salvation. Remember who you are. You're that warrior. If you don't have that helmet on, you're going to fall down, and you're going to be running home to the Heavenly Father. It's a tough world. Get a helmet. Come with yeah. a salvation. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> Life is hard. Yeah. Life is stronger together. Brother Ron, did you have a scripture today? How about we close with a scripture? You just speak. You don't even know it's here. Go ahead. Yeah. Oh, that'll help. John 2.17 The world and its desires pass away, but the man who does the will of God lives forever. Hallelujah. Yeah. That is perfect yeah, yeah. scripture for today. Yes. So go in peace today. Go in peace and be blessed. Yes. We love you. I don't know. We'll have to see what Richard thinks about it.